Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into every reference and easter egg in the brand new LEGO Ideas The Office Set. This is packed with so many references for Office fans to enjoy and discover and today we're breaking all that down and you can actually find different chapters down below going in order of the seasons as well as just some general other sort of category references in this set as well as some things that were omitted because I had the opportunity to interview the team behind designing this set. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started with the most iconic prop from the show, I'd say the world's best boss coffee mug. This is from season one, episode one, the pilot, and this can actually be found on Michael's desk. The stapler in Jello is also from that same episode, and this is one of Jim's most infamous and iconic pranks on Dwight. From season one, episode two, Diversity Day, we actually have a little banner that can be swapped out with another one from the set that says Diversity Day Take Two. From season two, episode three, The Office Olympics, on the shelf next to Dwight on the bottom, you can actually see all these studs stacked on top of each other. These are meant to be the yogurt lids slash medals. Now the bronze are really blue, and they're also the back side of the gold, so no flipping. Well, there's actually two fire extinguishers, I believe, in the main bullpen. In the main entrance to the office, we do have one in behind the glass. And while it's not that specific fire extinguisher, we do actually see Dwight break one out to put out the fire from Season 2, Episode 4, The Fire. As well as from that same episode, we have a black quarter tile, which is meant to represent Ryan's burnt pita, which, if you don't believe me, that was actually mentioned to me by the official LEGO designer. Ryan started the fire! It was always burning since the world returning! From Season 2, Episode 7, The Client, we actually have a 1x2 tile of Michael Scott's screenplay for Threat Level Midnight. This can be found in the bottom desk drawer in his office. And from Season 2, Episode 8, Performance Review, we could actually see on Michael's phone that Jan Levinson Gould, minus the Gould now at this point, is actually calling him. And while she does call him on a number of occasions throughout the series, I like to think that he's bringing in everyone for their performance reviews and having them listen to the call. From Season 2, Episode 10, A Christmas Party, we have a couple of different Christmas presents. The first one here, the most iconic, is the teapot that Jim attempts to give to Pam. And inside that brand new San Green teapot is of course meant to be the letter that he removes but later gives to her in season 9 episode 22 the arm episode another gift from the same episode is the 2x4 poster that angela is given that of course later oscar is forced to wear on phyllis's computer you could see an advertisement for bob vance vance refrigeration which, of course, the owner, we also meet in that same episode. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. From Season 2, Episode 14, The Carpet, the package left behind by Todd Packer is actually found underneath Michael's desk, which is represented from this little poop piece. From Season 2, Episode 16, we actually have another present, or I guess gift, from Angela to Dwight in the form of Dwight's bobblehead. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any printing, but it's still cool to have that referenced here on his desk. From that same episode on Phyllis's desk, we actually have a Valentine's Day gift from Bob to Phyllis, and again was confirmed to me by the fan designer. From Season 2, Episode 19, Michael's Birthday, this 2x4 sticker on the easel here representing Michael being sucked into a pyramid scheme. From Season 2, Episode 21, Conflict Resolution, we have Creed's Mung Bean, and that's represented by these two studs stacked on top of each other. I know exactly what he's talking about. I sprout Mung Beans on a damp paper towel in my desk drawer. Very nutritious, but they smell like death. While the boxes scattered throughout the set may not be specifically Jim's permanent file that Toby has for Dwight, nonetheless, a ton of Dunder Mifflin boxes with the green tiles on top are found throughout the entire set. From Season 2, Episode 22, Casino Night, the umbrella and coat rack, of course, are used to play a prank on Dwight, making him think that Jim has telekinesis. 
One of Stanley Hudson's accessories is a pretzel, of course, referencing Season 3, Episode 5, Initiation. Well, I like pretzel day. From Season 3, Episode 7, Branch Closing, we have the 2x2 sticker there in the corner saying do not drink the coffee which is a prank from Jim making Dwight think that he was of course sent that from the future. From season 3 episode 8 the merger the lazy Scranton initiation orientation video is played on the TV and that 2x3 tile can be swapped out for some other things that we'll come back to. From season 3 episode 10 a Benihana Christmas we have Michael listening to Goodbye My Lover. I don't have to buy it. I just want to taste it. From season 3 episode 14, The Return, we have Andy Bernard's hole in the wall from him punching it, which of course he later does in episode 21 of season 8, Angry Andy. From season 3 episode 17, Business School, we actually first saw Pam's painting of the office building. Meredith has an unfortunate run-in with a bat, which is actually one of her accessories here in the set. From season 3 episode 19, Negotiation, we actually see some of Dwight's many weapons, which of course feature his throwing stars, which one of them can be found in his top desk drawer. While a bullhorn can be seen on the stand in behind Michael's desk in a number of episodes, its probably most iconic use is from Season 3, Episode 20, Safety Training, which gives us this gem. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! From Season 3, Episode 23, The Job, we of course see Dwight trying to introduce his new form of currency, a shroot buck, which then of course leads to Stanley asking what the ratio is to Stanley Nichols. From season four, episode one, we of course have a two by four tile for a check written out to just science, which was done for the Michael Scott's Thunder Mifflin Scranton Meredith Palmer Memorial Celebrity Rabies Awareness Fun Run Race for the Cure. This is Pam. Pro-Am. Pro-Am race for the, they hung up. From season four, episode two, Dunder Mifflin Infinity, Terry's diner takeout menu is found in Daryl's office. From season four, episode three, swapping out that tile for the DVD screen, which everyone gets excited about finally reaching into the corner. From that same episode, we also see that Stanley's monitor actually has the original Dunder Mifflin website. Also from that same episode, swap the screen out again for Ryan's launch party which he has in New York, which Kelly then smudges a pizza slice on. From season four, episode four, Money, we actually find out that Dwight is attempting to open up his own bed and breakfast at Shrewd Farms, which we see an advertisement or website listing open on his computer. Also underneath in German, so Fort Buchen, probably butchered that, it means book immediately. From season four, episode seven, Survivor Man, we see Dwight's sword, which can actually be found in front of his desk, hidden underneath a couple of boxes. From season four, episode eight, The Deposition, we see that Michael enjoys Pam interrupting and dropping off little sticky notes, which can be found on his desk with this one by one tile sticker of a hot dog saying, hiya buddy. From season four, episode 14, The Chair Model, we find out that Jim has indeed purchased an engagement ring for Pam, which he shows off. Then, of course, later uses it in Season 5, Episode 1, Weight Loss, to propose. Oh, yeah, you didn't say that the weather was bad. That sounds perfect. From Season 4, Episode 18-19, Goodbye Toby, we have Toby's camera that he is excited to use for his trip to Costa Rica. This one is a bit of a reach, but I like to think that Pam's chair build is intentionally different than everyone else's and is lower because this is a reference to season 5 episode 10 the surplus when they're deciding whether to buy a new photocopier or chairs for everyone from season 5 episode 14 slash 15 stress relief my personal favorite episode we actually have the fire in a trash can that Dwight starts and of course from that same episode we saw Angela attempt to save Bandit, who can be found in the form of a little gray kitten piece 
inside of the cabinet from accounting. From that same episode, the conference room blinds aren't quite as uniform as the rest of the blinds found in the set. They're a bit uh, damaged, I'd say, and that's from Michael attempting to break out and yell for help. From Season 5, Episode 16-17, The Lecture Circuit, we have a couple of things representing Kelly's birthday. Her cake is represented here, spelled incorrectly, just like on the show, as well as a little banner printed out that says, It is your birthday, period. From Season 5, Episode 19, The Golden Ticket, a golden ticket can be found from Michael's Willy Wonka idea. Why would anyone think that this is my golden ticket idea. There's a one in 13 chance that this could be anybody's golden ticket idea. That. <laughs> From season five, episode 26, Casual Friday, we have Kevin's probably most iconic moment of spilling out his famous chili. From season six, episode 25, The Chump, we have the Radon Test Kit, which can actually be found up above on Michael's cabinet. This is a radon test kit. Please don't throw these out. From season seven, episode one, nepotism, we have Michael trying to instruct the office to don't, don't bother Luke on the easel that again is swapped out from earlier. From season seven, episode 21 slash 22, goodbye Michael, we have Phyllis attempting to finish knitting the gloves, which could also be a callback to that Christmas episode before, but given that the gloves are in the process of being knitted, I think it's from that season. From season 8, episode 6, Doomsday, Oscar is told by Angela to use a calculator, but instead decides not to use one. Now we're into the non-specific references to different things from the show. Starting things off with the minifigures, of course, most of them do feature their most iconic outfits that they do wear a couple of times throughout the show. But I do want to focus on the faces for some of the minifigures because I feel like they're either very specifically referencing something or, of course, they're just used in a ton of memes. Michael Scott, of course, has a number of iconic faces and expressions, but the two that are used for the set is this sort of unimpressed or upset expression. Also, he's got this laughing expression, which is probably after he just made a that's what she said joke. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> For Jim, he's got his Jim face, his expression, his look to the camera that is referenced in many shows beyond just The Office. And Stanley Hudson's faces are just both very iconic and perfect because of the expressions that many people send when they're unimpressed with something online. But specifically, Ryan's face actually has on the other side of the head some stubble, which is a reference to when he grew his beard when he was promoted in Season 4, Episode 1, Fun Run. In Michael's office, there are a ton of references, specifically though the American Eagle poster I found out from the Lego designers that is actually a reference to it being the American version of The Office instead of the UK. Also on Michael's desk is a Dundee while being seen in the very first opening of the show. We of course don't find out what that is until later episodes, specifically in season 2 episode 1, The Dundies. In Michael's office he has a map of Scranton as well as a certificate of authenticity for his watch. Little unit to the left of his desk, he's got some sort of award. I can't find what that is. I tried searching for such a long time to find out what that glass award was that he won. Nothing came up as well. That's actually a baseball, and while it's not in a cube, it is on a little glass stand, it seems, in the set. Also, the blinds throughout the set are perfectly lined up to allow you to have the minifigures actually looking through them, whether they're from Michael's office or through the conference room, or if you expand it out to maybe have them looking through the kitchen like Jim does. Now, Dunder Mifflin, of course, the company that they all work for, has a ton of references. Starting on the outside of the main bullpen, there's the giant logo, which is before the Sabre acquisition. There's actually a meeting poster next to reception, which says they have to show up on Saturday, which people online believe to be a reference to season one, episode five, basketball. You guys work on Saturday. Your face. There's a paper on accounting, which I believe is meant to be a ream of Dunder Mifflin paper. The Dunder Mifflin logo can also be seen on the desk that is later used by Andy. 
And I did a poll to find out if I should count these or not, but there are a ton of posters and paintings and different things that are seen in the show throughout many different episodes that don't really have any specific importance. Different decorations in the background from the actual show, but they are actually Legoized here. However, one poster in particular in Season 8, Episode 17, Test the Store, the teamwork poster can actually be found in the background of the Sabre store they launch in Florida. At the end of every workday, Jim can be seen walking over to the coat rack and grabbing his bag and putting it over his shoulder. That's actually represented here in the satchel piece. And of course, Pam's purse is also included next to that so they can walk out of the office together. On both of Jim and Pam's computers, you could actually see that it's a conversation between the two of them. Stanley has a couple of non-specific references, the first being Stanley's crossword puzzle, which is on this book cover piece in white, as well as on his desk, He's got a roller skate piece meant to represent a little car that he has on his desk, which throughout the series he has a number of different little car toys and models on there. And for Meredith's second accessory, it's actually this little coffee cup piece. And while I don't believe it's actually coffee inside, which we see her do a number of times throughout the show, I think that this could specifically be a reference back to the Valentine's Day episode where we do see her pouring in some alcohol into the little soda cup. And I think that this piece could also work for that as well. On the partition between reception and accounting, there's a potted plant, which also looks suspiciously like a beet. And just underneath that on the side of reception, there's this little checkered flag in blue, which it should actually be purple because it's a sort of flag or banner of the University of Scranton. Next to Dwight's desk on the shelf, you could see there's a sticker for Froggy 101 radio station. Not to be confused with the other radio station that he calls Rock 107, Hello, Rock 107. Am I the 107th caller? With Daryl's torso, it's not actually specific to him. You can't really make out the name as well as specifically with the collar, you can't see any of his skin color showing, which means that you're able to take this and recreate really hilarious and iconic bits from Season 4, Episode 10, Branch Wars, where they try and go to Utica and steal the photocopier in disguises, or if you just want to create the rest of the Scranton Warehouse branch, you could do that as well. And lastly, on top of this box, you could see there's this little build meant to represent Homer Simpson, which a toy of Homer actually appears in many episodes of the show, meant to be a reference to the show's creator, Greg Daniels, who was a writer on The Simpsons. And a couple of other references from the fan designer. On the check, you could see that the date at the top is actually the fan designer's birthday. As well as on this on this 2x2 two two tile, the fan designer was able to sneak in a couple of different references. The first one there being his initials, JL for JJ Lewis, and MU for Nina Marie Ugrate, Ugrate, not sure how you say the last name, who runs the Dunder Mifflin Paper Co. on Instagram, and CG for Christine Garrett, the Office Daily Facebook group page, who are both friends with the fan designer and helped get his very first submission to 10K. A side note mentioned from the fan designer is that five desks are specifically included in the set. That way, if you buy multiple of the set, you'll have enough to complete the bullpen, the three for accounting, as well as Meredith and Creed's two desks. Also in the interview, I had the opportunity to ask them what they wish they could have included. Laura, the model designer, said that she wishes that her favorite episode, The Dinner Party, could have been referenced here somehow with potentially Hunter's CD being featured. You took me And the graphic designer for the set, Diego, said that he wished there could have been a launch feature for Bandit. Say Bandit! <laughs> Chris, Laura's husband, the other Lego model designer, said that it would have been funny if somehow they could have included a bit of the ceiling to have Oscar's legs sticking out. And the fan designer, JJ, wishes that there was at least one reference to Aaron, and that there could have been a folder marked Mr. A Knife. It's dangerous to keep weapons in the home or the workplace. And of course, besides Aaron missing, the other character that everyone is sad about not being included is Andy Bernard. And Lego's official response is, 
that he's off to anger management because he just punched a hole in the wall. But there you have it everyone, that is uh, over a hundred references and easter eggs and things you might not have known about this set. Let me know if you found any that I missed, please comment it down below, as well as if you want you could check out my reference and easter egg breakdown for both the Friends Apartment set as well as the Seinfeld set and I'll link my review for this set here at the bottom as well. Hope you guys did enjoy the video, hope you all have a great day, I will see you all in the next one.